Wow. <laughs> okay. I'm going to try to get, not get emotional because this is like 10 years in the making. So. <laughs> My name is Allie Feldman Taylor, and I'm the president of Voters for Animal Rights in Brooklyn, New York. We are grassroots organizers that are fighting to make New York a more compassionate place for all of the people and animals that live here together. And we are very proud to be here on this incredibly historic day to witness the official signing of seven, get that, seven pieces of legislation to protect animals from exploitation and abuse. Like so many animal advocates in this room today, all of us have our own personal story about what got us to expand our compassion to animals. For me, one of the first parts was when I first watched one of many documentaries about what happens to animals in the farm industry. But it actually goes back even before that when I was a kid in Jersey. Growing up, my mom always had at least two rescued dogs, sometimes three in our home, but she never asked my dad if that was cool with him. She would just kind of show up with dogs after work. <laughs> Today, I continue to carry that responsibility forward by rescuing stray cats in Brooklyn. We take cats off the streets from awful situations. We get them vet care. Uh, we get them warm homes. We get them food. We get them love, and we help find them new homes. And what's amazing about animals, just like people, is that with just a little bit of patience and care, we always see that these animals are able to recover from trauma, from the horrific situations that they come out of. To everyone in the room, there is a mobile adoption van that's outside with amazing animals from animal care centers of New York City. If you have space in your home, in your heart, and in your schedule, I would strongly consider taking a, a view at the animals in the van and consider a, um, adopting one of them today. Now, I know, being that we're all animal advocates, many of this room probably already have one, two, three, <laughs> or more pets at home. <laughs> but there, there's one thing that I learned from my mom in Animal Rescue. It's that it's much easier to ask for forgiveness than it is for permission. <laughs> That's how my husband and I ended up with four cats. But back to why we are here today. We are all striving to protect animals, carriage horses that are exploited for cheap entertainment, ducks that are abused for food production, and birds that are cruelly captured and used for shooting contests. Which is why I'm so proud about the animal rights protections that we're gonna put in place starting today, here and now. We are celebrating the most progressive and expansive animal rights protection laws in the country. Thank you to Mayor de Blasio for making this happen. relationship with the mayor goes back to his public advocate days. Before it was cool to be a vegan, before veganism and animal rights was a mainstream household phrase, Mayor de Blasio was with us. And as I said before, we are organizers. And a lot of what we learned, we learned through Mayor de Blasio over the years in how to become better organizers as animal advocates. There's also two people in the room who some of you may or may not know who work in the mayor's office that have been incredibly helpful to us. And I can't thank them enough for all the work that they've put into advancing animal rights in our city. Put your hands together for Christine Kim and Jeff Dupay. <laughs> But certainly not least, 
I want to thank all of you, the animal rights activists of New York City. You guys, some of you have been at this longer than I've been alive <laughs> for decades. And some of you are new. But what you all have in common is your unrelenting commitment to getting legislation passed. Many of you camped outside city halls for eight hours at a time, not once, but four times over the past year at numerous hearings. You went to endless organizing meetings that we held at NYU. You organized within your city council districts and your own communities. You made phone calls. You visited your city council members. You posted all over social media. We are all volunteer driven. We are able to save thousands of animals' lives and allow more animals to live with dignity because of all of you in the animal rights community. So thank you. Now, let me ask you guys something. Let's get real. Would you want to pull a carriage through midtown traffic in the middle of summer heat? No! no. Would you want to be force fed with a foot long pole shoved down your throat? No! Precisely. <laughs> and with that, thank you all very much, and please join me in welcoming Mayor Bill de Blasio. Today we have a lot to celebrate. And everyone here has been a part of these victories. I want to thank everyone. I'm going to call out the organizations in a moment because this has been the most amazing coalition of people fighting for change for a long time and winning time after time after time. <laughs> Ali, you speak with such passion and you've done amazing work uh, over these years, and a lot of people have been inspired by you, and I want to, we're taking a moment now to celebrate how much progress has been made, and you were there in the forefront on so many issues, obviously on horse carriages, but also on the ban on wild animals and circuses, another great victory, congratulations. <laughs> And just outside a few moments ago with the adoption vehicle, which in and of itself is such a positive example of opening the doors wide for folks who want to be part of the solution and making it happen in a really positive way. And I just want to say it's, it made me very proud of New York City that more and more we're doing things in a humane way. And I think for a lot of people, this has been a sort of a growing awareness. It doesn't happen instantly. It's something that it takes patience and takes teaching and takes kindness to help people really think about these issues and recognize what we can all do together. But I also see how many people are responding. And being out there with the adoption vehicle was a great example, just knowing for so many New Yorkers what that means for them and for so many animals that they will be saved because of it. So, this is something very, very powerful. And there's a lot of people who deserve praise and thanks here. So I want to take a moment to do that first, because this is really a celebration of how many people came together to make a change. So let's start by giving credit where credit is due to the activists and the advocates. I'm going to call out the names of the organizations. I expect energetic response. <laughs> Voters for Animal Rights. Yeah. Night class. The ASPCA. The Humane Society. One of my new personal favorites. I'm not going to play favorites, but when I heard about it, I fell in love. Black Veg Fest. How cool. How cool.
NYC, hip hop is green. Very shy and retiring organization, PETA is here. <laughs> the NYC Bar Association Animal Law Committee. <laughs> NYU Animal Studies. the Wild Bird Fund. <laughs> and we got to thank them more than once, our colleagues from the City Council who have been absolutely outstanding, the sponsor of Introductions 1202A and 1378A, Councilmember Carlina Rivera. <laughs> The sponsor of Intro 1478A, Council Member Justin Brannan. <laughs> and he could not be here, but he deserves our thunderous applause. Nonetheless, the sponsor of Intro 1578 and Chair of the Health Committee, Council Member Mark Levine. <laughs> And from our administration, our health commissioner, Dr. Oxyris Barbeau. Yeah. My tour guide outside, and let's thank her for her extraordinary work. Risa Weinstock, CEO of Animal Care Centers of New York City, thank you. A leader of such important work, the commanding officer of the NYPD Animal Cruelty Investigation Squad, Lieutenant Adrian Ashby, thank you. <laughs> and my senior community liaison for animal welfare, Christine Kim, thank you, Christine. Give it up for Jeff Dupay again. So I just want to reflect for a moment before turning this on my colleagues. Uh, this has been a long journey for me and for so many other people, and it does go back, as Ali said, to when I was public advocate. And I want to tell people from the heart that I needed to be educated. I needed to learn from this movement. And I understand that now. At the time, many a day, I would be walking up the steps to City Hall, and folks from the animal rights movement would come up to me and talk to me. And I couldn't help but see the earnestness and the nobility of purpose. But I struggled sometimes to make sense of where it fit, of all the things that we needed to think about and all the, the challenges. I struggled to understand and to understand what could be done and, and why it needed to be done and how quickly it needed to be done. And it took a lot of conversations. And I want to really commend people for always being willing to have those very compassionate conversations with folks who didn't necessarily see all the things you saw. Uh, it was a very positive process. It was a very moving process. And I had to see the world in a different way and realize that some things that we came to believe were traditions were not good traditions. You know, let's be very clear. Something can be a tradition, and that does not make it healthy. It does not make it positive. And that we needed change. <laughs> and, you know, I, there were probably more than one, there was probably more than one day of revelation where sort of pieces started to fit. But it really started to grow in my mind an understanding that if our relationship with animals isn't right, then our relationship with the earth isn't right, our relationship with each other as human beings isn't right. The notion, the humane concept, it kind of dawned on me finally that this is about all of us and it's about everything. And if 
we allow cruelty in our midst, it's a poison, it's a cancer that grows. And if we renounce it and fight it, it makes us all stronger and healthier. That's what this movement has been about. And, and that's what this movement made for me, such a, why it made such a big difference in my thinking. And then we started working together. And Ali, it was very kind. I'm glad if I could have taught you something about organizing. You taught me a lot about organizing. And so did so many other people here. Because this wasn't easy stuff. This was not easy. But starting as public advocate and then continuing as mayor, what I keep finding is this movement is right so often points out things that actually can be done, should be done, and because you believe, they actually happen. Yes, yes. They actually happen. There's a lot of reasons to be a little worried about our world, mm -hmm. but if you want something to be inspired about, look at this movement. Look how many times you have been victorious for a more humane society. And I will keep praising the movement, and I'll keep praising the city council for being willing to be bold. And, and I got to talk to you about the example of foie gras, because you start learning about it, and it's just terrifying. It's terrifying that somehow this became a thing that humans would do and thought was normal. How cruel, how unfair, really against all the values we should hold, and why? for the entertainment of the rich. Because that's what it comes down to. We can ask ourselves about anything we do in our society, any of our contradictions, any of the things we need to do better on, but this one stands out. A whole lot of pain caused so that people who had a whole lot of money could enjoy themselves just a little bit more. That's what this was about. And you know, when folks started saying, no, this needs to change, I saw a, a kind of troubling outrage from those who wanted to protect the status quo. And I knew it was about them wanting to protect the bigger status quo. It wasn't just what they wanted on their plates. It was they did not like that their world was being reordered. They did not like that the things that they thought were always going to be their birthright were actually being challenged. And that's what this movement does time and time again. So, to me, it has been extraordinary to see a notion of what a compassionate society looks like actually start to come to life. In this big, complicated, bustling place, we're actually more humane all the time. We're actually being kinder and more compassionate all the time. And it doesn't matter whether you have two legs or four legs, we believe in fairness and equality for all. So I'm going to give you a very quick recap of what just some of the things we've all done together in six years, just the highlights. We've made real changes for the carriage horses. We have a long way to go, but we have made their lives better. We have a voice at City Hall now. We have People at City Hall who work for the protection of animals, who work for humane society, that's their job now. We never had that before, we have that now. We have, for the first time ever, full service animal shelters in all five boroughs. We have used the power of this city to fundamentally change how we eat. Meatless Mondays. Meatless Mondays. And a commitment to make 50% fewer purchases of beef. And I mentioned before, and I want to praise and commend the NYPD, because when the NYPD applies itself, extraordinary things happen. And the NYPD is focused through the Animal Cruelty Investigation Squad. It's making a big difference. <laughs> the 
those are just some of the things before today. And everyone knows there's been more. And now today, this is the largest city in the world to ban the sale of force-fed poultry. <laughs> Get ready for this. The days of foie gras in New York City will soon be foie gotten. <laughs> You can use that. <laughs> Today, there will be more justice for our horses. They won't struggle through heat waves in such inhumane, horrible fashion anymore. Today, there will be a new animal welfare office. That office will give the animal rights movement a permanent role in city government, a permanent voice that will never be silenced. <laughs> so sometimes we use the word historic a little too lightly, but this is not one of those days. This is literally historic. We are making a change that's going to be felt not only all over the city, all over this country, but all over this world. You made it happen, and we're signing it into law today. Before I turn to some of my colleagues, a very quick summary in Spanish, because we believe in a more humane society in every language. Oi. Firmamos leyes que protegen y defienden a los animales de la ciudad de Nueva York. Es nuestro deber proteger el bienestar de los animales y hoy seguimos en esa misión. Nueva York es la ciudad más justa para todos, especialmente para los que tienen cuatro patas. In joke for those who speak Spanish. <laughs> Now to our heroes from the City Council, and what they have done is heroic. First, thanks to her legislation, birds within our city and beyond will be protected and live better lives. They will no longer be tortured for sport or for luxury foods. What an achievement. Council Member Carlina Rivera. everyone. It's a big day. It's a big day. It is. It is a little emotional, right? Because animals are such an important part of, of, I think, who we are and how we treat them. And today is a very big day. And I want to thank you, Mayor de Blasio, over here, uh, for signing a historic package, a historic package that will advance animal rights across a number of different industries and areas here in New York City. I'm so proud to be a New Yorker today. Yes. And, and we have a history. We have a history that we have to live up to. New York State was the first state in the nation to pass an animal cruelty law. And today's bill signings are a continuation of that proud tradition. I want to thank you, Mr. Mayor, in particular, for signing two of my bills, which we heard a little bit about, the sale of force-fed foie gras and wild bird trafficking. Both of these bills and others by my colleagues seek to stop some of the most abusive and unnecessary practices in New York and with other cities and countries, making humane treatment of all living things a platform priority. I'm excited for our city to join these important efforts and really, really set a precedent for, I guess, internationally and, and nationally. So with this foie gras ban, no longer will these animals suffer from some of these horrendous symptoms and illnesses, broken bones that come as a result of violently forcing birds to eat more grain in 10 weeks than they would consume 
in a lifetime. And as for our most local birds, whether you like them or not, they're here to stay. <laughs> We must step up enforcement on poachers who put profit over humanity. And when, if you've seen a video on, on force feeding or if you've actually witnessed like some of my constituents when our pigeons are netted and tossed in a van to be shot for live sport, those images stay with you. They haunt you. They're emblazoned in your mind. And it is very rare that you get to do something that regulates that, that rights the wrong, and you get to do it with a crowd of people behind you who are experts in not just policy, but in compassion. And I have been so, so lucky to work with the people behind me to put forward legislation that is responsible, that is balanced, and that is kind. And I think we all agree that we need more kindness in the city. And it is, it is something that I'm going to make sure that I do every single day as a city councilwoman. There's a lot of people to thank, and we've heard about the organizations, but the policy, the brilliant legal staff at the council, uh, Zay Emanuel, Zara, Emily, Nicholas, of course, my legislative director, Jeremy Unger, my chief of staff, Pedro Carrillo, all of the groups behind me, they have really taught me a lot, and I want to thank you again, Mr. Mayor, for embracing a future for New York that is kind, that is compassionate, that is responsible, and that is forward-thinking for all that live here, whether on four legs, two feet, whether you bark or quack. This is the city for you, and we are going to make sure that we embrace and love every living creature. Thank you. Now a longtime animal welfare champion known for expressing his views in a number of different social media and through tattoos on his body, <laughs> his legislation will establish an office of animal welfare that will last permanently and, and really change the discussion in this city. And I want to thank him for his leadership. Council Member Justin Brannon. <laughs> Uh, little did I know when I got Meet His Murder tattooed on the back of my neck that one day I'd be standing here with the mayor um, uh, announcing all this, this great stuff we're doing. What did you say, foie gotten? Foie gotten. What about foie get about it? <laughs> That's, good. That's good. That's good. That's a Brooklyn take. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Local. Um, this is a really, really big day. As someone, my personal sort of journey um, to becoming an elected official really started as a teenage animal rights activist. Um, so to be standing here today as the author of some of this legislation and getting this stuff signed into law by the mayor of New York is certainly not lost on me. Um, and these are issues that really the folks behind me, the folks in the audience, um, have been working on for a very, very, very long time. Uh, my colleagues and I are just sort of lucky to be at this moment to harness this energy that the advocates have really been pushing for such a long time. So this is a huge victory uh, for animal welfare ad advocates across the city. Um, and... This is really, you know, a, a guy named Gandhi once said that the moral progress of a society can be based and judged on how well its society tr treats its animals. Um, and today I think New York is really, really taking uh, a giant leap forward uh, to making this a more humane city and hopefully other cities will follow our lead. So thank you all so much. Now representing the nation's oldest animal protection organization founded right here in New York City, the president and CEO of the ASPCA, Matthew Bergiker. It's a pretty extraordinary day and I have been moved as I listen to everyone and I hear the, the applause, uh, really, and I've been trying to, to soak it in. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you to the City Council. Uh, this important suite of laws will protect, as we've heard, a variety of animals, from birds to horses to dogs and cats, and it will prevent really unacceptable suffering and abuse. The passage of these bills reaffirms the City's commitment to advancing animal welfare policy 
uh, which was also demonstrated quite clearly through the creation of the Mayor's Office for Animal Welfare. And importantly, while these measures may be new, the broad intention behind them is most certainly not. For the last several years, New York City has been making incredible progress uh, in animal welfare, and that includes helping shelter animals find loving homes, connecting people in need with the resources that they require so they can keep and responsibly care for their, for their beloved pets, and stomping out animal cruelty. And we at the ASPCA could not be more proud to partner with the mayor's office, with the city council, and with the NYPD and the Animal Cruelty Investigation Squad in continuing the evolution of this work. With the help of engaged consumers and businesses and advocates like everyone behind me and lawmakers, we can reinforce that New York City is not only a place of deep, deep compassion, but is a humane model, as you've heard, for other communities across the country and, in fact, the world. And it's my privilege on behalf of everyone at the ASPCA and in consideration of the countless vulnerable animals who will be helped by this legislation to thank all of you in this room today. All righty. All righty. <laughs> Who's ready? <laughs> ready to make some history? Come with me to the magical table.